So about two years ago, I saw a short play by my friend Amanda Quaid called The Extinctionist. And I walked out of the theater and I thought, this would make a great opera. There's this question of how do we make art about climate change. I, I felt like opera could take this material to the next level because we're dealing with such extreme, messy human emotions in response to this thing that is sometimes weirdly abstract and then sometimes weirdly right there in our lives. I got involved in the climate movement uh, about four years ago, five years ago. Personally, I felt a feeling of being so out of control in the face of these gigantic corporations and the effect that they were having on the planet. And somehow in my internet you know, life, I came across this village of people who you know, were uh, choosing not to have children because of, you know, they, they didn't want to bring children into this world. And um, as someone who very much wanted to be a mother, I found that, that question very problematic and also very uh, provocative. And that was really fertile territory for me to, to explore uh, a kind of madness, uh, you know, and, and, and opera, I think, is a wonderful form for that, where I get to, I think, go much further into this ambivalence and this question and this, this terror that's happening in this woman. It's just these perfect little scenes that create this intense drama that you're just absolutely gripped by. I just felt immediately that her story is the story of an operatic, of all the operatic heroines that we've known and love. There's a central aria of the piece. Um, it's this beautiful uh, meditation. She has decided she doesn't want a child and she's seeing this image, this little girl. There's some regret mixed with the complicated nature of her decision of what might be best for the world, might be best for this child that she decides not to bring into the world. She is haunted by this child. So I came up with this idea, okay, there's a heartbeat. She, this is going throughout the piece. It starts the aria. How do I create that as the kind of primary motif that weaves through the whole thing? The story of the opera is about a woman who is very much trying to have a baby with her husband and not getting very far. And when she finds out her friend is pregnant, uh, it sort of sparks this spiral of uh, anxiety in herself. And at the same time, she's, she's become quite an obsessive witness, reader, a regurgitator of climate statistics. And it's also fueling the sense of anxiety and this feeling of being out of control, both of her body and also of the world. Suddenly she thinks, what if my contribution to this world was to not have a child? And it's about the fallout in her marriage and her friendship uh, and really this, this spiraling out of control of her own mind. She wants to take the radical step of sterilizing herself, of cutting her body off from the ability to have a child. At heart, I think it's a story about trying to take control of your life in the face of the uncontrollable.
Dan and Amanda created is actually only 60 minutes long, but the woman is on stage the entire time. She has to do everything that a soprano can do. She has to go from Sondheim to Berg. She has to be Lulu. She has to be Brunhilde. It's a marathon part. It's a really marathon part. workout. Finally, after two weeks of an intense residency here at PS21, we are about to open The Extinctionist. Heartbeat hasn't performed to an in-person audience since de December of 2019. So it's, it's an incredible moment of reconnecting and sharing with people in real space and time. And we are scared and excited to, to, to have that energy again. Well, I just arrived a few moments ago. It's a thrill to be back with folks. What a sense of relief and joy and, and excitement. You know, I, I think back to months ago when Louisa first floated the idea of commissioning Dan to compose The Extinctionist and commissioning Amanda to transform her play into a libretto. We had been defining ourselves as reinterpreters of classics, but Dan, you know, is our composer in residence, as it were. And it felt like a beautiful next step for us to, to make something brand new. <laughs> After a year and a half of isolation and virtual concerts, virtual recordings, everything remote, um, to be with people working this out, working through this process together, it's been really, really impactful and meaningful to see that there's like a light at the end of the tunnel. The music of The Extinctionist is a whole big box of sounds. We have an incredibly theatrical percussion setup which beyond sounding really evocative all the time, it's like storytelling to watch it. I love the way Dan sets text. Amanda has used these very simple daily kinds of words to get us to really heightened moments of drama. And so Dan has also combined these motifs that are sometimes very simple in their own way. Then on top of that, he has added this phenomenal orchestration. sets Amanda's text in this way that on the page looks very complicated and we spend a lot of time working it out and the idea is just to mine this incredibly natural way of saying a line and saying a phrase. What I'm trying to say is I'm having a baby. <laughs> we did it. A baby. <sighs> then he underscores that with a band which is sometimes playing with that, sometimes playing radically against it, and giving us many more points of view around it. I think what Dan has given us in this piece is he's made sure, as the libretto originally did, this is not some instruction booklet on how to deal with climate change. This is one woman's very lonely grappling. Oh, woman. being pulled one way, she's being pulled another way. She wants to make a decision. When I was writing her role, she's always around the beats. She's always just before, or just after, or just trying to find her way within the framework of the music.
I'll leave you two to work it out. There are a lot of moments in this opera I feel that feel very personal to me um, as someone who has a lot of friends who are thinking about slash starting to start families and have children. A lot of us are having discussions very similar to the one that the woman and the man are having, you know, about the future and about the climate. For me, activism is all about certainty and wanting to reach a definitive goal through group action. This is the opposite of that. This is a festering well of uh, ambivalence and private questions and uncertainty. It's interesting to me that the woman, I think, would not identify as an activist. She's not seeking out uh, a group to go march against uh, a corporation. For her, it's, it's very much a, a private uh, philosophical turmoil. One of the questions that I think this piece is asks is, what are you going to do about climate change? The woman makes this dramatic choice. How do we handle a sense of obligation, a sense of responsibility for our world? existential scream. The climate collapse is a kind of threat that is impossible to put into words. Music can help us express the extremity of that, the tragedy of that. <laughs> 